Hello, race fans. Once again, welcome back. Well, just welcome. Today, we have a great race for you today. It's the first annual... What's it called again? Yes, that's right. The first annual Target Winter Classic. We're here at Michigan International Speedway. As you can see, we had a kind of a problem. It snowed last night. Like, seriously, this is my home track. It was fine when I got home from work, but this morning there were, I actually had to shovel snow, and so did the track workers here at MIS. They had to shovel snow. As you can see, they have gone all in on the, the holiday theme here, the Christmas theme with Christmas trees right along the front stretch, light. Christmas lights strewn up alongside the walls. So we're in for an exciting race. Merry Christmas banner, as you can see right there. That's a helicopter, I think. Is a helicopter. I was wondering if it was going to be Santa or a sleigh. Anyway. There's Santa on top of the administrative building. we got to get to the starting lineup for today's race. On pole for the classic is going to be Peter Onjak in his Oldsmobile. Alongside is Martin Trickle. Then Sebastian Kukulon will start next to Diego Yepes. Austin Johnson will start next to Carter Friesen in the third row. Then Corbin Butch and Dave Benjamin Jr. in row number four. Then Austin Delgado and Zachary Fitzwater Sr. are going to round out your top Five, top ten. Jake Blue is in the six. He's going to be alongside Ryan Dalton to start the race. Michael Volk is going to be next to Priya McShane. Then Nathan Orman next to Ben Crouch. Casey Nanako, Nanako, going to start next to Larry Hagan. And then Austin Murray is going to start next to Gatlin Downey in row number ten. Jason Davey is going to start next to Eli Bright. Then it will be Dusty Neal who will be starting alongside William Duncan. Jordan Forbes in the 28 is going to be next to Zachary DeLello. Then uh, right here is Ryan Benjamin. He's going to be next to Tim Foster. And Matthew Eves will line up next to Mitchell Collins. Getting farther back now, outside the top 30. Kev Shearer is lined up next to Finn Christiansen. Uh, Riley Spurley Tube to the outside of Connor Bloom. And Sam Adoskin will line up next to Courtney Kozba. Chase Marks. And the three will line up next to Connor Hurley. Then Nick Roten and the hometown boy David Dayton in row 20 bringing up the rear of the field and qualifying hoping to get a better result here in the race Christian Vargas and Brandon Morris I don't even is that a Trans Am pace car This is interesting camera angles. I don't know if that's the track or this mod. It might be the mod. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to have a, a 40 lap, 80 mile race here in the winter. 42 colorful cars getting ready to get underway here. And as always, here's the command the fire engines coming to you right now. Engines fired, all 42 cars.
taking off. They're going to be led down by Peter Onjak and Martin Trickle. Jeez, the field's nearly body slamming each other getting out of pit road. Oh, they did. Some contact was made farther back, I believe, between Mitchell Collins and Matthew Eaves. Track two mile, D oval, sister track. For sister track to the now being torn down Texas World Speedway, and the uh, also Auto Club Speedway in California. Track built in 1968, hosted, well, completed, hosted its first race, a hundred mile uh, open wheel race, won by Ronnie Bucknam, I believe. First two races in Cup were in 69. The first was a 500 mile. The second was scheduled for 600 miles. Well, it was rain shortened to 330 miles. Ever since then, the scheduled distance has been 400 miles. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the classic. The Target Winter Classic about to get underway. All the snow on the track. And we're, the green flag is out. And we're underway. On Jack with the jump going into turn number one. Sebastian Kukulon is going to take the second spot away from Martin Trickle. Now he's going to make the dive underneath into turn three. Kukulon going for the lead on the very first lap. He's going to try and lead the first lap of the Target Winter Classic, and it looks like he will indeed do so. At the line, Anjak was getting a run up high, but it was indeed Sebastian Kukulon. Now Carter Friesen, he looked out. Now Corbin Bush to the inside, going for the third spot. Kukulon and Anjak side by side for the lead. You can see drivers already. There's three wide through a lot of the pack. Kukulon looks like he'll clear. Michael Volk now to the inside. Oh, they're fan out nearly four wide here. And it's not that war even warm out. It's 48 degrees. I'm surprised the snow hasn't melted yet. Corbin Bush will move into the third spot. The second spot. Now Anjak with a very aggressive move north to south. This could be letting Sebastian Kukulon walk away at the front a little bit. Ben Crouch challenging for third here. As there's Hagen up there. Austin Murray as well. Anjak now closing up on the back bumper of the 24. Anjak was the pole sitter, but he it's been Sebastian Kukulon who's led every lap so far. Anjak with the dive under Kukulon going in the turn three. He's got the position and he's got is he gonna can't no he is gonna clear coming off of four down the front stretch Peter Onjak your new race leader Larry Hagan makes a move three wide for second place Crouch was in the middle Kukulon shoved all the way back now outside of the top five might be in danger of falling outside the top Ten. Hagen going for second. Can Crouch hang on? No, he can't. Here's Ryan Dalton is up. Mark Trickle who started second. Finally working his way back up. He's back into the top ten here. Top five. David Dayton, who didn't have a good start, was a good qualifying spot, is up to 27. And yes, indeed, 
Kukulon has fallen outside of the top 10. Now Ryan Dalton. Dalton and, and Anjak are good friends, and they're going to go for 1-2. And now here comes Trickle, Jason Davey to the, trying to get to the inside in the number one. It was Ajak, uh, Dalton, Hagen, Trickle, and Davey at the line. Hagen getting shuffled out. Michael Volk is up here now in, in the top ten. Crouch. William Duncan, Eli Bright, and Finn Chris Jansen, I believe, the current top 10. Yes. Now Dalton. Is he going to take a look on the 14 of Peter Onjak? No, it's Martin Trickle who goes down low in the 22. Trickle's going to try and take second place away from Ryan Dalton. Now, Larry Hagen's up here. Is he going to give some drafting assistance to Dalton? It kind of looks like it. Remember, Michigan is a, has a very much a track where your arrow dependency comes into play. Now, Trickle, with the out inside line, is going to try and power ahead of Dalton. He's going to need a little bit more of a push from Jason Dady because Dalton is did keep the position that time by now here comes ben crouch to the inside the five of eli bright is up here now so is the 26 of mitchell collins amazingly as you can see we've remained clean this entire time Dady in the fourth now into the top 10 back into the top 10 is corbin bush Oh, slow car. Did Dalton bounce off the wall? No, I'm just crazy. But Dalton is losing some spots. Eli Bright to the inside, three wide, will take third place. And now it's Peter Onjak and Martin Trickle out in front. There's your top five, top ten. Casey Nanico in the Robesto's machine going to try and break through and will. He's getting uh, Gatlin Downey's right in tow. And oh, we missed it. Martin Trickle has led that lap at the quarter of the way mark. But can he keep it? Because here comes Ben Crouch. Crouch in the country time. Lemonade Oldsmobile as opposed to the Maxwell House uh, Ford of Martin Trickle. Fun fact, both companies, I believe, sponsored Michael Waltrip at the same time in the 30 car at one point. Martin Trickle somehow hung on to the lead. Oh, Corbin Bush looks like he's going to make a four wide for second. Almost happened. Oh my goodness. Corbin Bush going for second on Mitchell Collins. Gatlin Downey, Ben Crouch, your top five at the moment. Then it's Chase Marks, Casey Nanico, Eli Bright, Connor Hurley, Michael Volk. Yeah, it's getting crazy. Brandon Morris started last. He's looking to break into the top 10 or the top 15. There's Yepes. We haven't talked about him all race. Kev Shearer as well into the top 10. They are four wide. Oh, and there's a crash. Big crash. David Dayton's involved. Larry Hagan, Riley Spurley Tube, all involved. Hard hit. And the first caution of the afternoon is out. Oh. Coming to the line, it looks like Martin Trickle is going to take the lead. I don't expect there to be... Alright. He will. He'll lead back to the stripe. Now, I don't expect there to be many any fuel pit stops. 
I hope not. That's why we went 40 laps to try and prevent that. First, let's go back and look at what happened. So here we go. They're going like three wide. There's Hagen, Spurly Tube. Hagen bouncing. No, I think it was Spurly Tube. Spurly Tube looks like bounced off of Freezing a little bit. Made contact. Oh, Hagen nearly made it through, but Spurly Tube just got the back bumper. And he kind of pile drove a little bit. David Dayton in a wall. Fortunately, Spurly Tube did not come back down and take out more drivers. Like Nathan Ormond in the 43 would have been one who would have been in danger, as well as the 23 of Dave Benjamin Jr. Oh, Ryan Benjamin, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. and Ormond get together a little bit. So we'll see. Dave and Date, not what you were hoping to see for the hometown hero. And as expected, pit stops are made. Hagen is actually going to stay out for some reason. We're going to go live and Spurly Tube and Dayton. Interesting play. Now hopefully if they're smart, they're going to at least take on fresh tires. I didn't see that. They were not. Hagen, you would think Hagen would try and pit to repair that that bent up back end. After that came around and it really slapped the wall there. Anyway, let's try and reset your fee. Is Hagen pitting? Hagen might be pitting now. No, he's not. So let's reset your field. We should go green on lap 18. So a 23 to go. Martin Trickle is your race leader at the moment. Gatlin Downey is in second. Chase Marks. Yes, Chase Marks is in third. Corbin Bush in fourth. And Mitchell Collins in fifth. Then it's Connor Hurley in 6th, Kev Shearer in 7th, Ben Crouch 8th, Diego Yep is 9th, Brandon Moore is 10th, Michael Volk 11th, Ryan Dalton 12th, Casey Nanico 13th, Peter Onjak 14th, Eli Bright 15th, 16th is Jason Davey, Carter Friesen is 17th, and then Austin Delgado, Courtney Cosba, and Zachary DeLello will round out your top 20. Nick Roten, 21st, 22nd, Priya McShane, and Sam and Oskin, 23rd, and Matthew Eves, 24th, Nathan Orman, 25th, Connor Bloom, 26th, Tim Foster, 27th, Zachary Fitzwater Sr., 28th, William Duncan, 29th, Dave Benjamin Jr., 30th. And Ryan Benjamin, 31st. Jake Blue, 32nd. 33rd is Finn Chris Jansen. Christian Vargas, 34th. Austin Murray, 35th. Austin Johnson, 36th. Jordan Forbes, 37th. Dusty Neal, 38th. Sebastian Kukulon, 39th. Larry Hagan, 40th. David Dayton, 41st. And Riley Spurley, too, running in last place at the moment. Yes, Indeed. We will go green with 23 to go. So near the halfway point. Uh, 
fastest lap of the race has been by Diego Yepes and Kev Shearer, Martin Trickle, DeLello, and Chase Marks. Right? Yes. And Corbin, the other 10 fastest drivers by fastest lap, Corbin Bush, Mitchell Collins, Connor Hurley, Courtney Cosba, Ryan Dalton. Surprisingly, your other two race leaders are not that high up on the chart. Peter Onjak is 31st, and Kukulon's been 40th. So how they run was Onjak was on the pole sitter. Kukulon took the lead from on the first lap, then Onjak took it back. And then Martin Trickle took the lead from him and has been leading the way ever since. Pace car lights are off. Makes the, sharp, the hard left turn on the pit lane. Well, it's not that hard of a left turn, let's be honest. Green flag is out, and we're out and racing. Cars already fanning out nearly two to three wide. And then back to the single file for a little, most part. Is Gatlin Downey going for the lead already? I wonder if it's a disadvantage to be in first on the restart. Downey to the lead in the number 52. Here comes Corbin Bush with a dive. He's going to get underneath the 22. Bush just sitting there biding his time. Morris up here now. I could switch to this one. Morris going to make it four wide. Oh, oh, contact. Morris slightly down on the apron. Oh my goodness. How on the earth did they save it there? Meanwhile, three wide for third. Chase marks underneath Mitchell Collins and Martin Trickle. So you can see they continue to fan out. Kukulon looks pretty slow. Dayton, Spurly Tube, and Hagen. Meanwhile, Corbin Bush has taken the lead. Well, not officially. It was Downey who led at the line, but Corbin Bush is leading, coming out at turn four. And will likely become the fifth different leader of the Target Winter Classic right here at the halfway point. Now Downey's going to dive it inwards. Down low goes the 52. Chase Marks in the third spot. He's coming up. Trickle on the backward slide. Got caught up on that high line. Conveyor belt right to the back of the pack. Single file, the first four cars really right in the line. Any of them going to make a move? Marks underneath Corbin Bush. Corbin Bush slams the door shut on Marks and will dive underneath Gatlin Downey and take the lead in one and two in the process. Power move by the 13 there. Mark's hanging on the inside, but Downey will chop down and, and cut him off. Now Eli Bright. He's up here. Kev Shearer. Bright's going to make a move on Mark's as Downey's going to go underneath. Corbin Bush. Bright, it's fading. 
Marks. Oh, big power move by Ben Crouch. As Chase Marks, it looks like he's going to try and go for the race lead. They're three wide for the lead in turn three. Ooh. Marks has definitely got it at the line. Chase Marks, your new leader. They're almost four wide there. Carter Friesen is back up here out of nowhere. He's going for fourth. Marks has got some separation here. Martin Trickle. Where did Martin Trickle go? Way in the back. Trickle's back to 40th. Did he lose the draft? Maybe. Chase Marks, your leader. Kev Shearer, Ben Crouch. Three wide for the lead. It's like maybe Crouch or Shearer will get it. Crouch has got the inside. Courtney Cosba trying to no. Friesen is going to keep... Keep on keeping on right there. There's Eves up here. Oh, Delgado's up here. Delello. Crouch is going to lead at the line. Cosmo's going to make the dive to the inside. Freezing stuck high. Two wide. Most of the pack. Back to three wide. Trickle has fallen off the pace somehow. Martin Trickle has lost the draft. And Ryan Dalton is out of the race. Spurly Tube apparently wasn't too damaged and neither was Dave Dayton. Ben Crouch continues to lead. They're four wide for third. Dalton with a header issue. Maybe that's what... I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't look like Agan's going to play a factor into the finish. Or trick. Something is up with Martin Trickle's car. He's running slower laps than Hagen now. Oh, no wonder why. It was contact. Dalton hit the wall. And Trickle got involved. Meanwhile, Cosbo, I'm sorry to say, took the lead while we were looking at it. But by the time we got back, it's already now Zachary DeLello into the race lead. As here comes Diego Yepes. Yepes is going to lead coming off of two by a car length or two. Ormond is up here. Interestingly enough. So is Jason Davey. Yepes in that big apple market 71 is going to lead here. Ben Crouch going for the lead now. Tim Foster in the 17 is up here. We haven't talked about him really all day. This is Dusty Neal. Michael Volk, this is the slowest, fastest lap. Actually, it was only there's off. He's up here. As Crouch is going to take the lead back. Three wide for second. Eli Bright leads. There's ten laps to go. It's 
10 laps to decide the winner of this thing. I Martin Trickle might play a factor into this finish. Martin Trickle might. Dady in the second. Volk in the third. Nick Roten in the going for fourth. Nine laps to go for Ben Crouch. Can he hold on? Dead heat for sixth place. Exactly. Collins and Friesen literally tied. Sam and Oskin. Four wide. Oh, this is big. There's still four wide back there. Oh, contact into the wall goes Brandon Morris. So did uh, Casey Nanico. Oh, there they go. There's another one. Uh, Delgado's involved. Eve's involved. The big one. Kev Shearer. Nanico's in it again. Diego Yepes. Among others. Ryan Benjamin. Jordan Forbes. Austin Johnson. Nick Roten leads back to the line. Wow. We're going to get a three-lap shootout. Oskins in second. I think he might be in the catbird seat. Obviously, we're going to take a look at what happened. Why would we not? First, let's go look at... Let's take the alternate camera... That's not the camera angle I was hoping for. Guess we'll go for the TV One cam. Is that a sim? Nanako looks like I think he just pinched Morris into the wall. Meanwhile, there's still three. They're four wide, really. I think we slow it down. It was Delgado, I think, and Fitzwater made a slight amount of contact. Maybe. Gatto, it looks like Eves came down on Delgado. Turned him up. There's Yepes, Forbes. A lot of drivers. Priya McShane manages to get out of Downey took Downey takes a little bit, maybe. Oh, Spurly Tube and Morris get hit again. Connor Bloom takes a slight bit. There's Nanico. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen cars all involved. What a mess. So instead, we're going to jump up to live action. Nick Roten is your leader. Yepes is out. So is Nanako. They're the only ones on pit road. Okay. Let's see some heavily damaged cars. Ryan Benjamin, the hood's off, the front fender's completely gone. The dented, scraped up cars here. Crazy, 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 crazy. The pace car lights go off this time. No, it'll probably go out next time. Which means we'll have three laps. Nick Roten, your leader. Sam Ed Oskin. 
second, Chase Marks third, Michael Volk fourth, Jason Dady fifth, Peter Onjak sixth, Corbin Bush seventh, Mitchell Collins eighth, Courtney Cosba ninth, Ben Croucher top ten, then Eli Bright, Nathan Orman, Dusty Neal, Finn Chris Jansen, Christian Vargas, Connor Hurley, D Jake Blue, Tim Foster, Zachary Fitzwater, Senior Zachary Delello, your top 20. Austin Murray, Sebastian Kukulon, Carter Friesen, Priya McShane, Dave Benjamin Jr., William Duncan. That's pretty much everybody who wasn't involved in the crash. We got Brandon Morris, Riley Spurley Tube, Gallon Downey, and David Date in your top 30. Then Connor Bloom, Matthew Eaves, Kev Shearer, Austin Delgado, Austin Johnson, Jordan Forbes, Larry Hagan, Martin Tr Trickle, Ryan Benjamin, all running. Officially a fuel leak for Diego Yepes. Accident taking out Casey Manico and a header issue. On the 15 of Ryan Dalton. So, can Nick Roten hold off, to, hold on to win the first ever Target Winter Classic? Base car lights are off. See, maybe if you only probably these first few cars might might only have a shot. Out of them, who would... Oskins, pro, with the way the lead's been cycling out, on restarts, I'd say Oskin is probably in the best shot. Chase Marks has stayed up towards the front in most of this race. So has uh, Peter Onjak a little bit. Corbin Bush, they might be a little bit too far back. Orkin Pest Control number 20 could be in the catbird seat right now. But we don't know. It's the third time is the charm. Nick Roten is three laps away. He is sit just a little over six miles. From winning the first ever Target Winter Classic. The pace car. Does it go down pit lane? It does. Now it does. Waiting for the green. We do get the green. Green flag is out. Ozkin is going to look up high. Surprisingly. And Oskin's going to miss out his opportunity to go low into the corner. Nick Roten's actually going to hold it. Michael Vulcan, Chase Marks, Jason Davey now up here. They're going to try and challenge. Peter Onjak, Mitchell Collins. Two to go this time by. Davey going to go into the second place now. Volk's got a, not Volk. Roten's got a, a big gap. Here comes Mitchell Collins going to try and get a run down low. Two to go. He's got a block for two more laps. Mitchell Collins is coming though, and he's coming fast. Or was. Courtney Cosba up here now. There's Eli Bright. Mitchell Collins. Is he going to make a move? No, he does not. Going into turn four. Three, I mean. Coming out of turn four. White flag is out for Nick Roten. Collins makes the move down low. To the inside. Bright also making a move for third place. Ormond with a push.
Collins looks like he's going to be able to win this thing if unless Nick Roten can get a big run. Eli Bright is going to try and take it off of the corner, but it looks like Mitchell Collins is going to win. At the line, it is Mitchell Collins winning the first ever Classic. The first ever Target Winter Classic. So many cars off pace. But there it is. Mitchell Collins, your race winner. Eli Bright gave it the gold college try. Collins looks like he's going to be staying out. He's going to take a victory lap. So is Nick Roten. Maybe, maybe Roten was upset. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is he going to dump him? He's going to dump him. Oh, no. Maybe he's not going to dump him. Somebody else is taking a victory lap. Michael Volk. Official results. Orman somehow got fourth. I don't know how. Courtney Cosbo was up there. Collins, Bright, Roten, Norman, Cosbo, your top five. Then Chris Jansen, Dady, Neil Bush, and Hurley. You can see. On Chase Marks faded. The 13th, I said, Oskin was in the catbird seat. He dropped to 23rd. There's, there's your bottom. Let's see where everybody placed. Disappointing runs for some drivers. We're hoping for a lot more. Martin Trickle looked like he was going to have a great afternoon. That went away. On Jack was up front. No, Shearer was right towards the front going to the little yep, as I believe actually led lap. But there it is. There are your results. Mitchell Collins coming from deep in the field to win this one. Up on the 29th starting slot. Actually, I don't, yeah, nobody. Nobody in the top 10 really did qualifying, really did well, as you can see. Corbin Bush was the highest qualif. He seemed like one of the most consistently fast cars all day. So did Peter Onjack. Well, anyway. That was the Winter Classic. I hope you're having a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Hanukkah, Chanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever it is you're celebrating. I hope you're having a good time. I really do. Anyway, that's all for me. Um, yeah. For those of you in the, like, say, the NSDCA, uh, if you do want to, there's a couple of spots of trucks in my, uh, weird NR series if you want to, that you could probably get into if you want to do that. I might post a link to my own Discord that's really dead, but I don't know. 
And I hope you just have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and all that other good stuff. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. I hope you enjoyed the race. I I certainly did. That was pretty, pretty good. A lot of excitement, some lead changes, some crashes, uh, a green flag finish, nail biter to the end. You didn't know who was going to win. I think Collins was like sixth on that final restart and he came to win and heartbreak, triumph, and tr maybe not quite tragedy, but anyway, hope you have a good one.